What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 12 of our social let's play here in Football Manager 2018 and today we're back. It's the start of season 2. Of course a new season, a new dawn, a new day and hopefully this is the year we will get promoted. Of course if you missed last episode it was the end of season livecom. Prior to that we had two end of season episodes equally as heartbreaking and uh, well, after that heartbreak, I needed to go away, I needed to collect my thoughts, to rebuild, to rethink what I wanted to do here. And we've gone crazy in the transfer market. I say we've gone crazy, it's a bigger kind of turnaround of players than perhaps I was expecting. It's not massive really by modern football standards. Uh, you can see here we've had eight departures and seven new additions, so we'll go through these quickly. The first player we have, Rafael Martinho, of course, a player we brought in last year for 450k. Uh, I've ended up selling him for £800,000. Uh, I struggled to find a spot for him in the first team in the latter half of the season with Trincal just nailing down the left midfielder spot, and he was a fairly big earner at the club. And, uh, well, £800,000 was money that I needed to reinvest elsewhere. And as we go through these, you'll see that we have reinvested. Anyway, the next player we got rid of was Vasco Costa. He's gone out on loan. We signed him last year. And I thought he was going to be a useful player for us, and it just turned out that we never ever really used him. Uh, as a result, we've tried to sell him, no one wanted him, I've loaned him out, all his wages are going to be paid, so everyone's a winner as far as I'm concerned. The next few players, players who have left on free transfers, Adolf left at the end of his contract, we already knew that was happening back in January. Obviously a bit of a shame to lose a bit of a, a figurehead, I guess, in the dressing room, but he wasn't in the first team playing regularly last season uh, at any point. And while well, another player in a similar position is El Haji Bar, uh, who is, as you can can see here a player who we only had for one season he didn't play for us I wanted to get him off the wages he was earning a fair bit of money and uh, in the end we let him go on a free transfer anyway the next player a player I wasn't sure if I was going to sell Florian Tardio has left the club he's left the building he's gone to Lon who of course we lost to last episode or two episodes ago in the Ligue 2 playoff final they actually lost Lon in the kind of overall final to get promoted against a team from Ligue 1 uh, as a result they are still with us and they've picked up our key man he wanted to go he wanted the money i can't really argue with it he's gonna be earning 10 grand and uh well we got 850k for him which for a player who played 24 matches last season but only averaged a 6.88 average rating is a pretty good sum of cash here anyway the next player we got florin beringua left the club 29 years old another player who i kind of knew i wanted to get rid of at the end of last season whilst he is a fairly useful player um his wages were just very large six thousand pounds in total uh in the end we've sold him for 120k the 29 year old was very underwhelming last year you can see he was given a number of opportunities in the first team never really made it count a 6.95 average rating so we've let him go the next player we let go was Burdich, uh, a player who was initially our starting left back but Pendant ended up taking away that mantle was underwhelming when we did play him last year and a player who was just earning too much money to be considered a backup so again it was just a, another sale I guess to free up some wage budget the last player we sold Makalu uh, 19 years old Ivorian actually not a bad player but he wanted to move he only had one year left on his contract and I decided to cash in on him whilst we could albeit for a rather small fee so as you can see looking at the total money in at 1.9 million we reinvested that and a lot of it went on one man so we'll start with him Ricardo Martin as you can see here signed from Nancy he's 17 he's absolutely dynamite look at this guy and look at his stats capped to under 19s you can see looking at him last year he played 25 games in this division uh, at the age of 16 which is just absolutely ludicrous. He joined us for £2.4 million. It's going to be £1.4 million initially up front, and there are two £500,000 clauses, the first of which is if he plays, I think, 20 games for France's national team. We have to give them half a million pounds. And the other clause is that if we get the... Well, if we win the league in the next three years... And he's played 30 of the matches in that season. We have to give them half a million. Which I don't think is that bad, all things considering. So 1.4 million up front. A massive fee for someone in our division to pay. As you saw, we did recoup quite a lot of money. And I was, prior to even doing any sales, given 1.7 million to spend by the board. 
So I'm pretty delighted to get this guy in. I was expecting them to want way more, but I decided to put in a cheeky bid. Initially, they asked for 4 million. I waited a little while, and we've got a really good price for him. Anyway, another player we brought in, Canton Ducasse. You can see here, Ducasse, 17 years old, 15 finishing, 15 acceleration, 14 pace. Of course, we knew he was coming in earlier on last season, um, but good to finally have him here. I think he's going to be a starter for us as well. He's only 17, signed from Bastia. For £18,000. We approached to sign in Bastia, of course, a team who have been relegated down five divisions in real life. And well, we snapped him up. Anyway, Karika, another player we knew was coming in. Just a good little kind of youth prospect on a free transfer who might develop. Francisco Deli was the next signing. This guy is a great Mazala. I mean, look at him here. So well suited to this role for this division. 24 years old, Italian. We signed him for a measly £115,000. He only played two games last year in Serie B. I'm not sure what was going on there, but we're going to give him a chance. You can see here he has the potential to be a decent league uh, centre mid. Currently a good player for most league de sides. Delighted about that. Almeida, the next player he brought in, 18 years old, Portuguese youngster. He might be this year's Trincao, this season's Trincao, certainly. 18 years old, great centre mid, but a very good advanced playmaker as well, of course. We kind of discovered at the end of last season, we didn't have any strength in depth in this role. So with the addition of Almeida and also Ricardo Martin coming in, we suddenly have an abundance of ta kind of talent in that area of the pitch. Anyway, the next player we have, Isaac Mbenza, uh, a player who I think at one point was a wonder kid. You can see here we've signed him from Montpellier. They actually got relegated last year from Ligue 1, um, so they are in our division. We've paid only £400,000, which I think is a pretty darn good fee. He's a very good player, currently only natural on the left-hand side, but I am training him to play as a striker. And um, well, I'm excited to see what this guy might be able to achieve with us. He's very well-rounded, fairly small wages as well, only £3,000. So happy about that. And the last player we brought in, another kind of wide man. We've got Paul here. And uh, the reason we brought him in was just for a bit of backup. 24 years old, came in on a free transfer. He's either footed. Not got a whole lot of potential to fulfil, but he's a good player for this division. And he just offers us a nice option off the bench. You know, either footed, can play both wings. Flexible. That's what you can say about this guy. So with those transfer dealings, if we look here, we do actually still have money to spend. We have a um, £1.16 million transfer budget and a wage budget available of £25,000. If we look at the finances, at the end of last season, we did dip into the red, which was not where I wanted to be. But the wage budget this year it sits at £150,000, which is where it was at the end of last season. We've actually managed to cut and save about £30 million. Uh, that would be a lot, but £30,000 a week in wages with these transfer dealings. So whilst we have spent 0.1 million kind of net, um, the amount that we've cut off the wages is pretty ludicrous. You know, across the, an entire season, we've essentially shaved off 1.5 million pounds in wage expenses, getting rid of some of the more experienced players, but players who weren't really in the first team, and bringing in some young guard who had more reasonable demands in their place. So when you look at the team this year, I'm really excited. I feel like we've got a team that is ready for promotion now, and I'm hoping we're going to show that today. We're going to be taking on VAFC. In terms of the tactic we're going to be playing, I mean, you guys know what it is. It's going to be the 4-2-3-1. Uh, just a, a little note. Some of you may be wondering, Jack, why is the Knight not playing? And for those of you thinking, Jack, who is the Knight? Um, you will have missed the Academy um, kind of episode, the second one that we did. I will talk about him now. Gregory Chevalier here. Chevalier is uh, French for Knight. He's 15 years old. He's absolutely insane. Um, the only issue with him is that he is susceptible to injuries. Of course, uh, as I said, you, you'll know about him from um, the uh, Academy episode if you've seen him. If you haven't, welcome Gregory. He's probably our best player. He's 15. Um, I have got a bit of a big issue, and that big issue is the fact that he can't play in the league till his birthday. So we've actually got to wait until January before we can start him. Now, if we look here on his transfer, United are interested, Chelsea are interested, Bayern are interested. I've set his asking price as high as I can. Uh, I've already got him agreeing to a professional deal that's going to start on his birthday next year, next January. And um, it's a long deal as well. It's like three-year optional extension, three-year contract extension after promotion. I'm desperate to keep hold of this guy. But at least until January of this season, we can't play him. But those are kind of the players as a whole. If we just look here at the season preview, of course, it is a new season. So let's take a look at where we're predicted to be. Right now, media prediction is sixth, which is not too bad. You can see here a projected lineup. I don't know why it thinks we're going to play a 4-4-2. 
but if we uh, just deselect ourselves for a second, you can see here, looking at the team of the division, the Media Dream 11, there are a load of Montpellier players here. They are going to be the big kind of threat for us, I think, this season. But Ricardo Martin, obviously formerly of Nantes, is here, or Nancy, is still, well, he is here, you can see here. Um, he is the best centre attacking mid in the league, apparently, at 17. Another kind of funny thing here, you can see the Knight is considered that one of our two key players in the division. We can't play him, so that's good. I mean, the media know what they're talking about there. And also, actually, this is really cool. Uh, Ducasse is also predicted, uh, well, considered one of our key players. I'm hoping this guy is going to bang in goals for us. You can see, didn't play actually last year for Bastia. They never really gave him a chance. I'm hoping that here, he's going to make it count. And well, you can see... He's going to be starting for us. So our team to kick off this season, lots of familiar faces, really. Uh, Prevo is in net. At left-back, we go, of course, with Pendant. Um, left-back is still a position I'm looking at. I will say that now. Uh, I don't necessarily want to replace Pendant, but I'd like to get in a backup at the very least. At centre-back, we go with Florent Augier. And alongside him, we, of course, have Jean Ruiz. At uh, right back, we are going to go with Fuchs. I know that is going to prove controversial. A lot of you are like, Jack, play him at centre-mid. I need him at right back at the moment, unfortunately. But anyway, at the deep midfielder role, we go with Ristol, a player who did have a lot of interest over the summer. Uh, I set an asking price of a million pounds. No one has met that valuation yet. Mets, though, still interested. A player who could potentially go before the season's up. Uh, Panna, you can see here, obviously. A player we brought in last year for £500,000. Oh, sorry, £50,000 even. He was an absolute steal. He won um, League Player of the Year, if I'm not mistaken. But, well, what a player he is. Going to be our Mazzala once more this season. Trincao is going to be playing out on the left. He had a breakout season last year. I'm hoping we're going to see more of that from him this year. He just looks scarily good. Out on the right to start, we're going to play Dougie Boy. See what he can do. And the centre attack in mid roll we're giving a debut to Ricardo Martin today. And, well, up top, we go with Ducasse playing the advanced forward role. So, at least to start the season... I'm not changing system. I have still got the 4-3-3 Liverpool system in my back pocket. It's a, a you know a formation that we could whip out, a tactic that we could whip out. When we well, if we were to do that, I think Trincao would start playing on the right hand side as our right inside forward, and then Mbenza uh, would probably play on the left as our inside forward there because obviously he's right footed. Um, so that's an option that we've got potentially. I am training Mbenza as well just to play as a striker because. He'd be a really good complete forward, which is something that we may look to play down the line. So anyway, this is the team we're going to go with. Um, not a whole load of new play faces really immediately in the first team. Obviously, Ducasse Martin making their debuts. But besides those guys, it's just the bench really where you can see we've got Lacroix, who we've promoted from the reserve team this year, a very, very good centre-back. We then have Pierre Gibault on the bench, a player who we've kept hold of, an experienced player, one of the players to survive the big kind of cull that we had over the summer, getting rid of the players that we didn't need. We then have Francisco Deli, who of course is one of our Mazzala options, can also play the deeper midfielder role, although he kind of lacks defensive attributes. You can see here seven marking, or sorry, eight marking, seven tackling. I'd rather rather not play him there, but he is an option. We then have Andre Almeida, who we brought in as a good playmaking option in the centre of the midfield. And then higher up the pitch, we've got Axel Actas. And, uh, well, alongside him, we've got Kinto uh, Kitongo and, of course, Mbenza. So it's a very, very stacked team. A few players have kind of lost their positions. Axel Actas, of course, massive player for us last season, was a really key factor, but he did slow down for the latter half of the year. With Florian Martin coming... Oh, sorry, Florian. Uh, Ricardo Martin coming in. I'm just giving him a random first name. But with Martin coming in here, I mean, you can see that the, the difference is just outstanding. Um, it's a bit sad for Axel Actas because I'd like to continue to develop him, but... When you're presented with an opportunity to sign a player like Ricardo Mon uh, Martin from Nancy, you kind of have to take it. And with us signing him from Nancy, um, the reason I, he was on my radar really was because in the scout report I had of him from last season, he was really, really hotly tipped. But anyway, this is the team we're going to go with. Big day for Martin, big day for Ducasse. Let's see if we can get this season off with a win. Of course, as I said... Um, our media prediction is sixth. The board expectation is playoff, so it's slightly loftier than last year. My personal expectations, I want us to get automatic promotion, and that might be tricky with Toulouse uh, obviously getting relegated. It's also worth noting that um, I think Lons, who of course we lost in the playoff final, they have spent £2 million in the summer. So they have gone pretty 
blooming big. So I'm hoping that despite that, we are going to be able to, well, give them a good fight and hopefully finish above them in the table. Anyway, let's see how we get on. VAFC, a good team. We actually slipped up against them at the end of last season. Let's see if we can get this season off with a bang. And well, Ducasse, number 10, and uh, obviously Martin as well, making debuts. You may have noticed, eagle-eyed viewers, I've numbered my players quote-unquote correctly. I don't really care about shirt numbers, but I know there's some viewers who desperately do, so I've done it for you. I hope you're happy. And, um, well, hopefully the shirt numbers can give us some luck now. So we are away from home for this game. Not necessarily the easiest game to start with, but VAFC, they finished bottom half last season. They were involved in a little bit of a relegation scrap in terms of they weren't safe until towards the tail end of the season. So we'll see how we get on here. You can see, look at the stats early on. They're yet to have a shot. We are creating a lot, and we're also bossing possession here. That's what I want to see. But can we see an end product at the end of it? Ducasse, Martin, I'm looking at you guys to make an immediate impact, please. An assist for Martin, a goal for Ducasse. I'll be a very happy bunny uh, in this game as well. The game continues to progress on. We're yet to have a highlight, and we've had quite a lot of shots. We've not a whole lot of end products and two centre mids on bookings, which isn't really what we want to see here. Um, Pote has given away the ball a lot. We've lost a lot of the ball in the middle third. We've struggled for possession in the opposition half. Let's go on a slightly more controlling style. Let's just try and hold on to the ball a little bit more. You will notice that with the system this year, I am trialling at least initially full backs on attack instead of wing backs. I may well end up changing that back, but I kind of just want to experiment a little bit. Um, we'll see how it kind of plays out, I guess, over the early start of the season. And the main motivation behind doing it is that uh, both Fuchs and Pendant are better suited to wing back on a, or sorry, full back on attack than playing wing back. And the two roles, they're not too dissimilar. If anything, the full backs play a little narrower and a little more compact, which I think would help us defensively this season. So we're going to trial it at least initially. Anyway, an hour gone. Not really the classic game I was hoping to start the season with, but finally we do have a highlight. And, well, can Ducasse make something happen? Number 10 lays it back to Jean Do Fuchs, who's, well, as I said, in that fullback attack role, kind of wandering up the pitch a little bit, but not getting too adventurous. Dougie Boy now lays it off to Panna. Back inside to Martin, who lays it to Trincao. Lovely football here. Can we find an end product? Ducasse! And he finds the back of the net on his debut. I am very happy about that, if you can't tell. What a move that was. That was such nice football. Great passing play, switching to control. Something that we might look to do a little more this year because we have some really talented players in the final third. And I'd like to make the most of them and give them time to really work the ball and perhaps pen in teams. And, well... So far this game, it's going really, really well. Uh, with Pan on a booking and Ristol on a booking, I'm going to make a double change to be safe here. Uh, I'm going to bring in Delhi to play that defensive midfielder role. As we identified before, he's not the greatest defensive player. Actually, do I want to play him there? The dilemmas. I see I could swap him with Panna, but then I'm not overly convinced with Panna. I am still looking. I'm in the market for a backup left back. I wouldn't mind getting in a really solid defensive midfielder as backup and for a bit of competition for Ristol. Because um, at the moment, at least, he's got that kind of position nailed down. Although it's worth noting that with uh, the Knight coming in, obviously, the 15-year-old as probably a defensive midfielder for us, that kind of role's probably going to be nailed down to him from his birthday on the 20th of January. Not that, not that I'm counting down to that date or anything. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make another change. I'm actually going to bring in Mbenza, and we're going to play him out on the right-hand side. In fact, I've lied. Because of Mbenza being right-footed, I'm going to play him as an inside forward. I'm essentially flipping the formation, in case you can't tell. But I think we will keep Trincao on uh, winger. Obviously, he is uh, left-footed, so this might be a little bit tricky for him. But I really want to play Mbenza as an inside forward out on the left-hand side. So, um, yeah, we'll go with that change there. And Benza making his debut. Delhi making his debut. Let's see if in the last 20 minutes we can get another goal. Make this more comfortable. And, uh, well, hopefully defend this set piece here because they're yet to have a shot on target. And, well, if it happens now and finds the back of the net, I'd be upset. Fortunately, it does go blazing over the bar. And, uh, well, let's see how Deli and Mbenza get on. Uh, we have got uh, Almeida, who I'd quite like to give a debut to. Martin's not had a great start to in his first ever game. I said I'd be happy if Ducasse got an assist, uh, a goal and Martin got an assist. I think we're going to have to settle for one of the two. 
But let's bring in Almeida, um, the Portuguese youngster, and see what he can do in the side in that advanced playmaker role. We've brought him in to be competition for Actas and uh, Martin in that position. And I'm curious to see what they can do. Anyway, Duc that's a red card. That is definitely... He's just hacked down Ducasse. He can't handle him. Get him off the pitch. He's had a he's had a Ramer there. Do you, do you get, it's like a nightmare, but his name's Ramer. I know, I'm a genius. I'm here all week. Right. Can we get something from the set piece now? That would be nice, wouldn't it? I'd like to make this comfortable so that I don't go into the last two or three minutes thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to get FM'd. If it finishes like this, I'd be happy. We've limited them to just two shots on target all game. It's been a, a pretty commanding performance. Of course, I'd like to just be a little bit more threatening in front of goal. But a win is a win, particularly against a team we slipped up against at the end of last year. Of course, our form at the end of last season was bitterly, bitterly disappointing. Um, so to get things off with a win here was kind of important as far as I was concerned. And it looks like we are going to get that. Maybe we can still get that late goal. Um, we are still pushing forward here in the final third. The possession has evened out in this half. The AFC definitely stepped up their game. But um, it's been still very comfortable, really. We still have a chance here. Ducasse, I thought for a second he might find the back of the net. He's going to use his pace, actually, to beat the defender to the ball and wins a corner. But I do feel like this is just the pointless highlight to end a game. So, I'm pretty. why is there a giant football over there? And answers on a... Why is there a giant football in the corner? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It's 1-0 one, one here. We've got the result we needed. That sending off late on really didn't change the game all that much. Well done, boys. Very happy with that. You can see Trincao got the man of the match performance. He did uh, get the assist as well on the goal. Only a 7.4 rating. Wasn't exactly a great performance. But it gets us off to a winning way to start the season. You can see here other teams winning. Nancy won. Montpellier, who I mentioned, they have been relegated this year. They have a very good team. You can see they've got uh, Paul Lasagna. I'm calling you Lasagna. That's the name we're going with. Uh, he's very good at centre mid. Uh, I don't know if they've kept hold of their goalkeeper, Benjamin Leconte, because he's a very good goalkeeper in FM terms. Um, looks like they have kept hold of him, at least for now. So I, I guess they'll be happy with their team. Their team is very good, and they are going to be tricky to beat this year, but we'll see what we can do. They've also got Nigel de Jong. An odd team, Montpellier. I don't know when we play them, but that will be a really interesting game to see us take them on. It looks like, actually, it's not going to be until November. And then we have them towards the end of the season as well. So we've got that to look forward to. In terms of when we'll be back, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to play it by ear, at least initially. Kind of see what teams emerge as challenges around us, wherever we end up emerging as well, I guess, in the league table. And, uh, well, we will continue things from there. Hopefully you did enjoy this episode. Please do let me know what you made of the transfer business. All in all, you know, we've spent a little bit of money. I have got room to spend more money, and there is lots of wage budget in excess. Ideally, I'd like to save that a little bit. But, um, as I mentioned before, I'd quite like to get a new left back. I feel like when you look at the squad depth here, all in all, it's pretty solid in a lot of areas. But the left back position, definitely an area of concern as well as the centre defensive mid position, at least until the Knight is able to play for us on his birthday. I mean, we'll have to wait around for that. But, um, yeah, generally speaking, across the team here, you can see we've got some good strength everywhere. You know, a few players who fill in, fill in multiple positions. But I feel like we've got a first team that, if we don't have a major injury crisis, even calling upon some of the backups, should really be pushing for promotion this year. But anyway, guys, that's going to be all from me. Hopefully you did enjoy. Leave a like if you did. Uh, obviously, subscribe if you're new around here. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.